Hi again, and welcome to Pearl Magazine. In Hong Kong, more than 150,000 people live with some degree of hearing impairment. For most older deaf people, they cope with these challenges by relying on their children. These kids are commonly known as CODA, or children of deaf adults. But they also often face big developmental challenges, such as delayed speech. As Pearl Magazine's Tina Jang discovered, CODA must also shoulder extra responsibilities as they take on multiple roles in their family. This afternoon, a mother patiently waits at the bus station to pick up her son. I'm not working now because I have my son, Jason, to look after. I'm a full-time mom. Chan So Ying is a deaf mother. Her son Jason is in primary school. Jason is a child of deaf adults, or CODA. Jason knows that I'm a deaf mother. He knows that I can't talk and I can only sign. He uses sign language to communicate with me. Sometimes he can understand my signing, sometimes he can't. My name is Jason. I am seven years old. Mommy, give me up! Mommy, give me up! Jason has been learning sign language since he was a toddler. Now he can understand most of the signs his mother uses, but not all. I think Mommy doesn't know how to talk and doesn't know how to listen. It's so hard. Sometimes I don't know what mom's saying. Growing up as a hearing child of a deaf mother, Jason has always played the role of interpreter. Okay. So Ying lost her hearing at the age of eight. Now she prefers using sign language to express herself. Many people don't understand sign language. They don't know how to react when I'm signing. I asked if they can use pen and paper to communicate with me, and they frown, maybe because it's too much trouble for them. Sometimes Jason complains that it's tiring to talk to deaf people using sign language or writing everything down. I agree it would be better if I could hear. It would be more convenient. I can feel a sense of inferiority. So Ying used to do packing work in a factory, but she had to quit that job after giving birth to Jason. When I was pregnant, I was thinking it would be better if I had my husband with me. But he left me at that time. I gave birth at Prince Margaret Hospital. I looked at the baby and started to worry. What can I do? How am I going to take care of him? I was on my own. My parents were not here either. Luckily, Jason has full hearing. So Ying was determined to raise him by herself, even though it would be a tough job. He has nobody to talk to. As his mom, I can't teach him how to talk. I was worried that he wouldn't talk much. Mother and son have their ups and downs in their relationship. On this Saturday morning, So Ying is taking Jason to a special playgroup organized by a local charity to learn spoken and sign languages, and more importantly, emotion control. If she buys toys for me, I will be happy. I like her. Sometimes mom just doesn't like me. Why? Because I'm not good. Sometimes she's angry and I don't feel good. But do you love your mom? Yes. 
Located in a public estate in Kwai Chung, the charity has been serving hearing children of deaf parents and their families since 2013. Cindy Chan is one of the founders. We are mainly helping deaf families. We help the kids develop their speech, handle their emotions, and we teach them social skills. We are also dedicated to providing workshops and counseling for deaf parents and let them know how to deal with their kids, families, stress, emotions, and so on. Growing up in a deaf family is not always easy. Cindy knows that very well. My parents are both deaf. Growing up, I had many challenges because they can't hear or speak. I had to help them translate and handle family issues. I took over the parents' responsibility. We don't learn to speak as early as other kids. We are not really good at studying or talking. Sometimes we also have to deal with discrimination. Meanwhile, I didn't really understand my identity as a kid from a deaf family. According to the latest statistics, over 150,000 people in Hong Kong are hearing impaired. Over the past eight years, Cindy and her team have helped more than 300 local families with deaf parents. When they first came here, they didn't talk much. They were shy to meet new people or they would be afraid to get to know the outside world. We are trying to help them feel at home and give them a sense of belonging because we are also children of deaf parents. We are older brothers and sisters, and we will accompany the younger ones so we can connect. We share the same feelings. Cindy and her charity want to help the children of deaf adults, or CODA, to acknowledge their special identity as bilingual and bicultural and develop their potential. Deaf parents can also make friends here. We're all mothers. We all have many worries. Some of them have to deal with three children. I only have one. We have many family issues, and we join this parents' group to help each other. When we talk to each other, I realize they're also having a hard time. So I think I should be more patient with my son. Huang Xiaofeng met some friends after taking a few courses for deaf parents. Originally from Fujian province in mainland China, Xiaofeng's son Jackson was one of the anchor babies, children whose parents are not Hong Kong permanent residents. I'm nine years old. My name is Jackson Huang. Jackson is now attending a local primary school in Shamshui Po. He comes here to study on weekends. Over the past few years, his mother says he has learned how to sign pretty well. At first, he would stare at me while I signed, but he couldn't understand what I was saying. I asked him, are you afraid of learning sign language? He said, OK, I'll learn it step by step, then I can help mommy to translate. Now that Jackson is older, he feels embarrassed letting his classmates know his mother is deaf. But he has also been learning how to defend his mother. I'm afraid that they may laugh about it. When they see my mom using sign language, they'll know she can't talk. I sometimes tell them it's not the right thing to do. However, there are times Jackson has mixed feelings towards his mom. She's a really good mom. If she hurt me, she would say sorry gently. Sometimes I've been so naughty that she would beat me. I would turn around and refuse to see her sign. I wish she could talk to me. Last year was tough for mother and son. We had been fighting for a year because we were all grounded at home due to the pandemic. In 2020, I was pushing him to study. This year, I got help from social workers and learned how to set some rules. At first, I didn't know how to teach him. He was bad-tempered and very self-centered. If someone criticized him, he would see silently in the corner. 
Hearing loss happened to Xiao Feng when she was a kid. When she had a baby, even her closest family members doubted whether she would be a good mom. I was taking care of him, then I fell asleep. He was moving and crying, but I wouldn't know. Then my mom heard noise and opened the door. She realized that her daughter was sleeping and her grandson was crying. My mother has been taking care of him since then. Now Xiao Feng is still trying to build a closer relationship with Jackson, even though she thinks she's not a perfect mom. I give myself eight points out of ten, seven to eight. Many deaf parents they have low self-esteem. Sometimes the hearing relatives will say, "Oh, I I don't feel you do have ability to take care of your children. Maybe you can bring your children to my house." I'm a lucky child because my parents they insist to take care of me. My parents are deaf. Sign language is my mother tongue. Cantonese will be my second language. Mandarin third and English is the fourth. Cassia Cheng is a freelance sign language interpreter at the charity group. Growing up as a multilingual kid is an advantage for many, but it was also a burden for young Cassia. She remembered one particular incident on Parents' Day back when she was a primary school student. My teacher let me be a little interpreter. When my teacher say, "Oh, your daughter have a very good result on the test," and my mom start complaining. Oh, she didn't wash her face and brush her teeth. I feel very embarrassing, and I just interpret to my teacher. Oh yeah. Oh, my mom say I'm very good in my、uh, daily life, and my teacher will notice my mom the facial expression so weird, so look so angry. But and then my teacher notices I'm lying. Cassia used to feel embarrassed using sign language to communicate with her parents in public, but she has since changed her mind. I'm used to say, "Oh, don't, don't sign, don't sign," but later on, I think they have to know my parents are deaf, so please don't have this kind of discrimination, or please understand my parents' situation. Now Cassia also teaches sign language. She wants to encourage more people, especially those who have deaf family members, to learn more about it. Some of them they don't have a good relationship with their parents, don't have any connection with their parents, or when they come back with the parents, they don't know any sign. They start to learn sign language when they are older, so they regret it. Wanted to. Let them know they can have a better life and better relationship with their deaf parents. After the break, a story on local wine lovers that is absolutely in poor taste. Stay with us. Welcome back to Pearl Magazine. There is no shortage of wine lovers in Hong Kong, and since wine duties were lifted in 2008, wine-related industries have flourished. So we met with local sommeliers and connoisseurs to learn why there's more to wine than just drinking. It's a story that only gets better with age. <laughs> Humidity and temperature are very important in the storage of wine. Area shelters are naturally humid and of the right temperature. There's no need to worry about power outage. Inside this World War II air raid shelter are some of the most prized wines Keith Chu collected over the past decade. I enjoy wine and love buying them. Over the years, as I got more into wine, I've developed a wine shopping addiction. As an addict, Keith has about 5,000 bottles of wine, some of which are older than he is. These vintage wines are rare in the market and are highly coveted. This Margo is from 1936, 85 years old, probably even older than my dad. 
There are very few of these bottles from the same vineyard and of the same vintage left in the world. The greatest value in a good bottle of wine is for connoisseurs' consumption. I visit them every now and then. <laughs> Keith enjoys wine tasting with friends. It's a common interest that brings them together. So we opened a second growth wine from 1961. Good wines are best shared among good friends. Many ask whether one could drink wines that are decades old. Let's hear from expert Peter. It gives off a refined fragrance of blackberries with a touch of herbs and spices. It also gives off flavors of aged tangerine peel and ground pepper towards the end, almost like a tobacco or cigar smell. Overall, it's a very harmonious blended taste. Sometimes when we consume vintage wines, we have to accept the reduced fruitiness. Peter Kwong and Keith met over a bottle of wine from 1961 a few years ago. They're tasting another one from the same vintage this time around, and both say they have a renewed understanding of the wines. The amazing thing about wine is that the winemaker is probably no longer alive, but we're still sampling the technique and philosophy of winemaking at a particular time in history. We are literally consuming a product of the climate back then and tasting the history. What I like about vintage wines is that you can truly savor them really understand the meaning of the saying, aging like fine wine. Peter worked in F&B when he was young. 30 years ago, when wine drinking started becoming popular, he studied and became an internationally qualified sommelier. He says there was little access to wine-related knowledge back then, and Eric Wong's column on wine introduced him to this world of the much-loved beverage. I had no idea what wine was back then. I enjoyed reading Eric's articles and learned that wine is such a vast subject. I learned that wines from different years, say 1994 and 1995, could sell for very different prices, and the difference in climate will have a genuine impact on the wines. Peter and Eric have developed a strong bond over wine. Eric is not a trained sommelier, but when he was young, he bought many books on wine from his travels overseas as a reporter. He never thought his wine column would inspire Peter's career. My column was primarily stories. I always hoped that what I wrote could help pass on some knowledge of wine at some point in time. In the past, wine drinking was deemed a luxury consumption. In 2008, when all duty on wine was lifted, wine-related businesses flourished, and wine-tasting courses became popular. Sommelier Sami Leung has been in the industry for almost 20 years and says that tasting wine properly could elevate the experience. First, we'd observe it under a light source for its clarity, then have a sniff. What you could detect should be the primary aromas. Give it a swell. Now if the wine is good, you should be able to smell secondary aromas. Lastly, spit it out so that you won't be affected by the alcohol content. The primary and secondary aromas Sunny discussed might be abstract concepts. The International Culinary Institute is equipped with wine-tasting facilities for students to learn from industry veterans. A bottle of wine contains a mix of aromas. We can isolate them here so that the students can distinguish them easily. The primary aromas are from the variety of the grape itself. The secondary ones are from the winemaking process, which could be influenced by the winemaker. The tertiary aromas are from aging. Peter has been a sommelier for over 30 years, 
is often invited to different restaurants to taste new dishes and advice on wine pairing. At this restaurant today, he's trying a white and a red from Australia to decide on the food and wine combination with the restaurant's young sommelier, Andrew Lam. Andrew is excited to work with Peter and says he has learned a lot from him. I didn't think he'd have such an interesting method. Peter suggested using two different sauces, which modifies the dish and changes how it tastes. In addition to wine pairing suggestions, Peter also hosts wine tasting events. This wine tasting soiree has been postponed a few times because of the pandemic. But even with social distancing rules, aficionados gathered to try new wines with Peter, who is the host tonight. Hong Kongers may not be very familiar with wines from Slovenia. Peter says attendees who come to wine tasting events are introduced to the special characteristics of wines from different regions. My role is to advise on food and wine pairing, so I study the characteristics of each wine so that I know how to sell these wines to potential customers when I share my insights on stage. It's really for reference in the market for customers to consider whether a particular bottle of wine is worth buying. Peter is very well respected in the sommelier world. If he considers a certain wine good and that he helps introduce and promote it, it'd sell particularly well. Many would agree that life is like wine. Both are better as they age. Having enjoyed a lifelong career in wine, Peter hopes to continue to do something he is passionate about. I think a Somalia is a career that brings joy to people. It's a fascinating thing to be able to be part of the industry and to offer some advice to others because of the taste buds that I'm born with. That's Pearl Magazine for this week. Next time, with the Tokyo Olympics fast approaching, Olympic hopefuls are already gearing up for the next games as they go for gold in Paris. See you then. Bye for now.